Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Dr. Tom LeHue. Today we're going to be talking about listening to the counsel from all of your numbers, all the numbers that are associated with your type. You know, every type, you know, is linked in total to five different numbers. And so we want to talk about the value of listening to the counsel from those numbers. Um, welcome to my channel and uh, thank you for liking and subscribing. And in the description below is a link to my website where you can get a lot more information. And also uh, you can book appointments with me to help um, you work through, you know, the challenges that you're discovering as you learn more about yourself from the Enneagram. Um, if I can walk with you and help you unpack, you know, what it might mean in terms of life change and life transformation for you, or just help you out with your relationships, um, I'd love to love to hear from you. The link is below in the description. Okay, so let's jump into this topic today. The last video I published, um, you know, was about going willingly to your number of unhealth and what you can learn from that exercise. And so if you didn't check out that video, make sure you check the video out that's right before this one about going willingly to, um, you know, your stress number or your number of unhealth or your number of disintegration. There's a lot of terms for for this. Um, now, what I want to talk to you about today is go a little bit deeper. And this is something that I often do in my coaching appointments with people um, that that I think is extremely helpful and uh, may help you if you feel stuck in life or you feel like life's not working or your relationships aren't working or you're having a hard time, you know, um, quote unquote, finding yourself or getting in touch with your, uh, you know, decision making ability um, or just not knowing what to do next or not knowing what direction you should go. And should I be nicer and kinder to the people in my life? Should I be more stern, more bold, more rigid? Should I, you know, seek out more information or maybe I'm getting lost in all this information uh, and it's time to take action? Well, I think one of the great places to begin is by not only looking at your type, you know, which most of you I'm sure have already done by now. You've looked at the strengths, weaknesses, challenges, obstacles, you know, kind of your superpowers of your type and also the kryptonite of your type. You know, what are your compulsions and impulses that sometimes don't work in your benefit? Well, and then, you know, now I've encouraged you to to not only look at your number of health, but to, to consider your number of unhealth or your number of stress and the wisdom it can give you. And I want to go a little deeper in this study with you in this, in this, um, in this process, because I think this is such a rewarding exercise, such a helpful exercise, um, and such a challenging exercise. Okay, so what do we mean by the council of your numbers? Well, you know, every number is tied to four other numbers. Okay, every type is tied to four other types, you might say. So I myself as a seven, you know, am I go to a five in health and I go to a one in unhealth. Okay, and I've explained, you know, that what that looks like before in other videos. Um, and then, of course, you have your wings on both sides, a six and an eight. Um, so all five of these numbers, in my case, seven, five, six, one, two, that, that's my counsel, okay? That's where I can go to draw wisdom. What I'm saying is, imagine if you, once you've identified your type and you've got it for sure and you know that's your type, and if, again, if you need help with that, then in the description below, contact me through my website and um, I'll help you work through figuring out exactly what your type is and even the subtypes and all that kind of thing, okay? So, and, and it can be challenging for some of the types. Some of the types really have a hard time, you know, uh, differentiating themselves and, and figuring out exactly what their type is. So once you know your type, in my case, a seven, okay, imagine, imagine yourself sitting at a conference table, okay, and you are in charge. So in this case, the seven is in control, which is kind of a scary thing, right? <laughs> um, so this, if you know all the compulsions and weaknesses of a seven, that's kind of, can be kind of a frightening thing. Uh, but so seven is in control, okay? Seven's in control of this meeting or seven is the judge, the jury, the CEO of this particular group, okay? 
And on one side, you know, I've got my uh, six on one side and I've got my eight on the other side. And then I've got my one and my five right here on the table as well. And we're having a discussion. Okay, we're having a discussion about, well, what should I do? You know, what career path should I take? Where should I live? Should I sell my house and move to this other city and take this job? Should I marry this girl? Should we have another child? Um, should we pay off our credit card before we plan our vacation? Okay, all whatever the issue is, everything from trying to figure out what's my life's purpose you know, what direction uh, should I go in terms of a career to sometimes really simple tasks that can still seem at times, you know, to bog you down and, and make you stuck. Whatever the decision is, probably more important with the big decisions, imagine yourself at this council meeting, listening to the wisdom from your advisors and your advisors are these numbers, okay? Now, whatever your dominant wing is, is probably your right-hand man, okay? It's your vice president of your corporation. So you're the president and your, your dominant wing is your vice president of your corporation. Your vice president really helps you get out of a lot of jams, okay? You've depended on that vice, that vice president, that CEO, you know, You've depended on them a lot in your life to help you get out of difficult situations, to help you, you know, own your problems and work through your challenges. So you're probably going to go first, you know, to that vice president to find out, you know, what, what their wisdom is. And sometimes, you know, you can get a little too connected to that dominant wing, to that vice president. And there's a whole nother, you know, consultant right here on your other side. You know, you're, you're this other vice president, you know, that sometimes gets left out. Your less dominant wing often has, you know, a, a good deal of wisdom to offer you to help you when you are in trouble or to help you when you are stuck or to help you work through your problems. But your ear is so inclined to listen to your dominant wing that often you don't pay much attention to what the less dominant wing could tell you or how they could help you. And a lot of times the solution to many of your problems are right there next to you, but that less dominant, you know, whatever he is, consultant or she is, that consultant in your life has kind of been pushed down to the end of the table and you haven't really been relying much on them. And you need to bring them back up to a more dominant position in your corporation and uh, try to balance these two vice presidents, you know, so that you're getting the counsel from both of them because it's both of them that is going to help you. And whatever, you know, whichever one of those you tend to lean on the most, often the answer to your struggle is by leaning over to the other wing and getting the wisdom from that wing. But not to leave out your numbers of stress and your number of health or your, your, your two, you know, integration, disintegration, because they're at the table as well. And they will encourage you and help you. Mostly your number of stress is going to be a voice of caution for you. Okay. And then your number of health is going to be challenging you toward what you could become or what you could do or what the next, you know, opportunity is. All right, let me play this out for you, what this looks like to some degree for a type seven, since that's, you know, you know, the one I'm most experienced with. All right. So let's say you got this challenging situation. There's somebody in your life that's creating difficulty for you. That is, you know, making life challenging for you. And you're not sure how to deal with them. You've tried to be nice. You've tried to whatever, or you've got a big decision about, should I move and take this job and change careers, go back to school, yada, yada, yada. Oh, it's overwhelming. I don't know what to do. Okay. So you lean on the six, and the six is that voice. Of course, the seven's like, off for a new adventure. So you already know what sevenness is about. You already know what your main dominant type is, and, and those compulsions of your type, which often work for your benefit 70, 80% of the time, 20% of the time, 30% of the time, are not working for your ultimate good, okay? So when you observe those impulses and compulsions within your type, you don't always have to listen to them. You can 
you can go in a different direction. You are not limited to your personalities, your types, compulsions, and impulses. You're not limited to it. You can change your course of action when you change your mind. Listening to this council of number is a great place to start to know when your impulses in your type are not working for you or are not in your best life goal, life interest, okay? So the six is gonna be that voice to the seven of stop and think now, use caution, make sure that you stay connected in your relationships, um, make sure that uh, you follow the rules and make sure that um, you, know, you, you, you realize what the consequences could be to your brash action and you don't want people turning against you and you don't want the universe to rain down fire on you. So you need to proceed with caution. You know, you need to make sure that you're tied in at the right people, that your connections are good and that you're not going to risk those connections with this decision you're about to make. Okay, so that in my world is my dominant, you know, vice president who's right there to give me counsel all the time. Now, when I bring Mr. Eight, you know, back to my table and I say, hey, Eight, come here. You've been down at the end of the table too long. I want you to take a seat right here next to me. Thank you, Six. I've heard from you. Thank you. Now, I need to hear from, from Mr. Eight. Mr. Eight, what advice do you give me? Now, I don't do this as you know, I don't talk to myself out loud often, but I'm just trying to help illustrate and visualize the kind of mental conversation that you can have when you when you think this way. It'll help you work through your problems. Mr. Eight, you know, what do you have to say to me? What's eight going to say to you? Okay, you know what eight's all about, right? Eight's going to say things like, why don't you do what you want? Why do you got to listen to everybody else? Why can't you just stand up and and say out loud what the truth is? Why don't you, what keeps you from going to that lady and or that person that's been miserable in your life and just telling them, you know, you got to stop. I'm not listening to this anymore. I'm not taking this garbage from you anymore. Eight is going to try to embolden you. Eight is always going to try to, you know, strengthen you and protect you and protect your environment and make you own your own property. And so eight's going to say things like, you know, if this is what you want to do, if you want to um, quit being a veterinarian and instead open a dog grooming shop, if that's what you want to do, then do that. You don't have to give an excuse to everybody. You don't have to explain yourself to everybody. This life is short and you better take the opportunity while it's here and don't feel compelled to make it make sense to everybody. If this is what you want to do, then just say it out loud. Look people in the eyes and tell them what you expect. Look people in the eyes and tell them that this is what you want to do. Quit beating around the bush. Quit him hawing. That's the kind of stuff that eight's going to tell you. Now, since six is my dominant wing, there's a lot of times in my life when, when things would have worked out better for me if I would maybe not have listened to six so much, if I would have listened to eight more and just been a little bit more bolder. You know, look at a fellow employee and, 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 and tell them, look, you're supposed to be here at nine o'clock. You keep coming in at 930. That's not acceptable. Okay. But instead, you know, six wants you to be cautious and six wants you to play it safe. But if you can sometimes say, all right, six, we've heard from you. We've got your opinion on this. Mr. Eight, what do you think? Mr. Eight's going to say, what do you want to do? Do that and say it out loud and tell people the truth and look at them in their face and tell them, you know, this has to stop or this needs to change or I'm not going to be a part of this anymore. Um, so that often can provide you with the solution to your problem if you're willing to lean over on your less dominant wing and just visualize you know, what that energy is all about and what they would tend to say to you, okay? Now, you still got two other voices here in this council, okay? You've got the, let's go with the, with the negative, you know, the one, and I talked about that in my last video. So, the one might say to you, all right, well, if you were going to quit that veterinary business and start that dog grooming shop, 
you know, what, what needs to be done? What do you need to do? What is this really going to cost? What is this going to look like? You know, let's get a list. Let's make a to-do list. Let's get, make some action steps. And you know, what is this, what is this really good? Cause seven, you know, could just jump in and launch into the next big thing and dive in and it's going to be great and optimism. You know, the one is that real voice of reason that's not necessarily optimistic that says, you know, well, are you going to, what does it take to get your license? What does it take to get, you know, to, um, uh, to rent a place, you know, of operations and you're going to have to hire staff. And what about all the equipment? And, you know, the one just goes right into that to do list of of what needs to be done to actually put this idea into action and, you know, make it happen. And so that that number of stress that sevens go to in a number of stress, you know, really counters and balances you know, all of the optimism and dreamy idealism of a seven, the one just puts it down on the road and makes it very pragmatic and says, I'm a doing type and I want to know what I'm supposed to do to get this dream out of dream world and into reality. Here's the bottom line. Here's the kind of work it's going to take. Here's how much it's going to cost. Are you prepared to do all of that work? Are you prepared to do what it takes to sit your rear end, your caboose down in a chair behind a computer long enough to sort all this out and figure out all these details? Are you really prepared to handle all this details that are going to result from this decision? So one is a very powerful voice to listen to in this council when you're about to make a decision. Okay. And you still got number five. What's five all about? Five is, you know, the less is more person. Five is the uh, another boundary type, you know, that wants to enforce boundaries with the eight. A five is going to say, well, if you're going to make this decision, you better get the information. You know, you better really research the information. It might be wise to, to do some studies or a business plan. It might be wise to collect some data and find out everything, you know, that you can about what it would take to operate a business like this, or find out as much information as you can about all the graduate programs that are available. So you're about to launch into a graduate program and, well, my brother went to that school, so I guess it's great. Okay, Mr. Five is going to tell a seven, mm, you might want to get some more information. You might be, you know, not, you might not be acting with enough information. So you better dig down, do some research of your own and find out some more information to, so that you can make a decision you know, that's not just a whim. That's not just an impulse like a seven. Um, so think about that. How helpful that exercise is. Um, I'd love to go around every one of the types and show you how this works. You know, um, I, I don't have, I'm not going to take, you know, an hour to go through, or it would take a lot longer than an hour to go through every type. Um, but I mean, hopefully you can, start to, maybe it'll click with you. That's what I'm hoping is that this process could click with you and really help propel you out of the stuck jam that you're in and help you, you know, work through to a more reasonable, more managed, more, um, um, you know, advised decision that you can feel good about, that you can feel confident about. And guys, a lot of what I do in coaching people is is helping them work through their crisis or helping them work through their decision making process to see what might be obvious to someone else is not obvious to you when you're in the middle of that crisis you know we have a lot of what are called self limiting beliefs like i can only be a veterinarian or a dog groomer um either or really you can't do both why can't you do both? Well, I guess I never thought of that. Mm, okay. So helping you work through those self-limiting beliefs, you know, can be extremely helpful. And a lot of times, of course, you're not even aware. You're so far down into the rabbit hole, you know, that you're so far deep into the forest that sometimes you can't see your path out. One of the first places to start is, you know, Listen to your number of unhealth, okay? 
listen to your less dominant wing. What is their energy all about? How can they, you know, what do they might have to say to you? Listen to your wing, of course, your dominant wing, and listen to your, your number of health. And a lot of times, you know, that can be extremely helpful to you. Um, I just, I want to, my brain, I'm a seven, right? So my brain is always doing this and I'm like, tell them more, tell them more, tell them more. <laughs> Sevens are also natural sharers, okay? Sometimes not so much of what they've got, but they're, well, often they are generous people, but they're also sharers of information, enthusiastic about it. So let's, let's give you a little bonus round, okay? Let's talk about like, for example, a three. I mean, we could do this with any type, but let's, let's talk about a three. So a three, you know, threes can sometimes get lost in achieve, 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 win, 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 success, success. I got the trophy. I got the plaque. I got the promotion. I got the car. I got the Versace. I've got the Gucci. I've got the... Okay, you guys know all of the compulsions and the impulses of threeness, the achiever, right? So listen to the three in their council meeting, okay? They've got a four on one side and a two on the other. What's the four saying to them? The four saying, this is great, but is this really what you want? That is a powerful, powerful advisor for a four. That is, or for a three. That is a powerful voice for you to listen to. You know, think about that. So you're running, 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 staying up all night, you know, overcoming all of your competition. I'm a leader. I'm different than everybody else. I'm a leader. I'll, I'll put in the long hours. You can't stop me, right? Mr. Four, your vice president is tapping you on the shoulder. If you'll listen to him, Mr. Four, or listen to her, whatever. I'm not trying to be one way or the other on gender. I'm really, I'm not, I'm just in my head, you know, I'm a guy, so I'm talking like it. So Mr. Four next to you is saying, hmm, that's great. Yeah, you did a great job. Is that something you really care about? Is that true to you? Is that something that, is that award or that training you went through, is that really resonate with your heart? Oh, maybe you don't know because you haven't talked to me in a while. And that's the way a four might, that's kind of that four energy is, yeah, maybe you don't know because, hmm, you don't talk to me very much anymore like you used to. You don't listen to me very much anymore. And man, that four can be so helpful to the three. Well, what if you're a dominant four, you know? What if you're the three wing four and probably an introvert, you know, and you're the professional and you're very focused on achieving, achieving and safeguarding and building a nest egg and, you know, I want to, uh, you know, own my space and I want to be um, independent and all the things that a three wing four. What is Mr. Two? You know, what's Mr. Two, the other advisor, you know, on your other side, you know, might be pushed down to the end of the table. Bring him back up to the, you know, bring him back up to this spot right here and say, Mr. Two, you know, what do you have to say? What's a two care about? Connections with other people, man. Are you helping anybody? Are you giving back to anybody? Are you shining the spotlight on others? Or is this all about you? Man, that two is just an extremely important voice for your long-term success and health in life. The two is saying to you, that's great. You know, you graduated top in your class and you've got this important position. How are you giving back to others? How can you mentor others? How can you, how can you make this business not just about you and your success, but how can you leverage your success to benefit others and to share your knowledge and your wisdom and your, your success in such a way that other people's lives are blessed. Man, give back, give back, give back. You're, you're going to get so much by giving back. Um, that too can be such a blessing to your life as you bless others, okay? Then you still got Mr. Nine, you know, who's saying to you, you might want to take a break. You might be running, you know, at full volume and all eight cylinders and you're going to wear yourself out if you don't take a break, if you don't rest, you know, uh, you, you've got to work in some time for yourself and you've got to, 
you've got to uh, work in some time for just some relaxation if you're going to, this is a marathon, this isn't a sprint. So you're gonna have to take some breaks along the way and you're gonna have to relax. And maybe every race doesn't have to end in a gold medal. You know, maybe you could just enjoy the race and, you know, just focus on doing what's right in front of you and not always so focused on what the next big hurdle, or next big accomplishment is going to be. Just settle in on what you're doing and just do what you're doing, okay? And then Mr. Six, you know, where you go in health is maybe telling you, why don't you get your eyes off of just your world and you know, make sure that you're not leaving anybody behind, you know, make sure that you're, you're connected to your wife or your husband, your kids, the other employees at work, you know, find out what they're doing find out what's important to them, find out what goals they have. And, um, you know, make sure you get good information because sixes like good information, you know, they're natural problem solvers and, and, uh, you know, they want to be connected and they want to make sure that their connections are solid and they don't want to leave people out. And so all of these numbers, if you'll just kind of process them, can be an extremely helpful place to start in trying to manage the challenges that you're faced with every day. And then, you know, you still have all those other numbers that you're not tied to, which can still give you wisdom if you'll go around the entire dial and think about, you know, the problem that I'm facing right now or the challenge I'm facing right now, you know, how would a type unrelated to me deal with this problem? There's wisdom in just trying to gain the perspective of every type. You don't believe me? Just ask uh, a nine, <laughs> okay? Uh, there's great wisdom and understanding all the types. So if you're just focused in on the Enneagram to understand yourself better, you're missing a huge, huge benefit. The Enneagram is designed not just to help you understand yourself better, but to help you understand all the people in your life. You know, what motivates them, what their impulses are, what their hangups, their challenges are. And as you learn more, not only about yourself and learn to ask the, the right questions of yourself, um, you know, you're also learning about the people that you love and care about so that you can relate to them in a more compassionate, loving, gracious way. As you recognize their impulses, you're more tolerant, more compassionate of them, like a nine. Okay, so um, be present to life, guys. One of the ways to be present to life is to be present to yourself. And listening to this council of numbers is a, another way to be present to yourself in your fullness. Okay. See you guys next time. Thank you and uh, blessings.